Hey guys, uh, this is going to be another little quick tutorial on uh, line work with Sketch and Tune inside of Cinema 4D. Um, it's, it's a nice uh, addition to uh, anything you know about Illustrator. Uh, these lines can be exported out. Um, I, I still think the Make 2D in Rhino is pretty effective, especially um, in combination with this. But th this technique is pretty good too. Um, much better than Maya's vector rendering. Anyways, we're just going to do simple objects. Uh, we're going to start off with a square, or a cube, excuse me. And um, let's go ahead and set up our uh, one uh, hatch. Uh, so we're going to go sh uh, create shader texture material. And we're going to drag and dr go ahead and drag and drop this on that. We're going to go ahead and make a normal material for it too. Just uh, go in here and change this to white. Looks pretty good. You know, right in there. Okay, and make make the specular colored. Okay. So then we'll drag and drop that there. And so as you see right now, with sketch and sketch material alone, inside of your render um, settings, which is right here, um, sketch and tune has happened. Inside sketch and tune, you can see here. Uh, if you go to main first and switch this to advanced. Usually it's set on simple, but go to advanced. In here in the main, you see that it has folds, crease, and borders checked. Well, this basically means that no matter if a object has a sketch tag on it, like you see on the cube up here, um, this little kind of orange box, whether or not it has that on the object itself, it will always do folds, creases, and borders. So any of these checked, will automatically use those. Um, and as you see here, you can, with uh, each individual one, you can adjust them inside of here. Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and uncheck these for now. And then um, in rendering, um, I always just, you know, don't even bother with it and go ahead and move this to best, line AA. And then everything else is adjustable. I mean, this is stuff when you're st starting to troubleshoot. Maybe you uh, don't want them all to appear um, with your custom. This is a clipping plane, which is camera near, and uh, resolution independent. That's all dependent on adjusting post render. Sometimes these things help. Um, and in shading, uh, I usually take the background color off and take the shading off so that it, we're basically in control of all of that. Um, inside of editor display, I mean, depending on what you're working with, you can click this on. Now you see that the lines are actually appearing on the screen um, according to this. And of course, if we delete that tag that we put on there earlier and take that off, see nothing appears. But if we go back over here to lines and we turn those on, we can see those things starting to come in because it's affecting the entire scene. So we'll turn that off. Okay, and that's basically the settings there. That's usually what I have it set up. We're going to go ahead and go into output. We're going to do this at a nice, you know, tablet um, size. Tablet, okay. Get that in there just for that camera. Let's go ahead and make a camera. These are all things I've gone over before. Adjust this down to 150. We don't need it that high. Um, save, remember PNG, and we're just going to give that a name. Cube. And we're going to go ahead and save that somewhere. So, uh, cube sketch tune. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Alphas. Save. Actually, we just have Apple channel. Okay. So, um, now we can drag and drop the sketch material back onto the cube, or we can right click and apply. Either way, we're just going to work with it as it is right now. So one thing I like to do a lot is over here in these, let's just go through all of them. So basically here's fold, which is basically almost the silhouette in this case. Uh, crease, this is the edge creases. Border, doesn't do anything in this case. Outline, it's going to do about the same thing a fold does. Overlaps, we don't have any of those. Angles, it looks like we got some angles, uh, intersections. You can adjust these with whatever. I like to use the contouring, though. So the contouring on the 
on the bottom here you see mode, uh, angle, position, UVW. This is like your UV map. So you basically can do contours there. You'll see it's at a 20 step right now. Um, and I think, oh, oh, okay. So the reason it's not showing is because within your sketch and tune and your editor display, you do not have contour click. So there's our contours. Here we go. So now, as you can see, we can increase the number of contours at any moment and start to get some really interesting effects. And that angle is always changeable, you see? Really great. This is really effective. You know, and then we, of course, we can change where that, how far that goes across it. You know, so we can change the angle and we can change the, what position it's going at. Okay, so let's even up our shot a little bit here. And well, see, one thing that I notice is isn't effective, of course I kind of want the creases on, is that um, you don't get any depth on the line. So if you were drawing this in perspective, you would see depth on the back. So if we go inside of the, the sketch material properties, we can see a lot of adjustments here on the side. So main, this is, of course, you can add notes to this, what you'd like. Uh, strokes, you can do a lot of variation on the strokes. Um, usually for architecture stuff, I don't uh, deal with this as much. Um, there's a lot in the content browser, um, Cinema 4D, of different kind of uh, lines that are already set up for you, but I usually just make my own. I don't touch, and adjustments, same sort of thing. You can have a stroke, you can adjust it as it goes across, is how you create like painterly effects and stuff like that. Uh, curve stroke, you can, you know, these are pretty self-explanatory. So color, of course this, we're gonna go ahead and make another color, and we're gonna pick this one up and make this color gray, so we have a gray, um, and on the black one, under color, we're gonna, we see it has some modifiers here. And the couple modifiers I use is I use distance a lot. And with distance, you can see you can have a gradient and adjust this. You know? And so now, you might not be able to see this within the, let's see if we can full redraw. Uh, 3D lines. See, we're getting a little bit here. So now, uh, I don't think it's going to give us anything. So we're going to have to render this in order to actually see what this looks like. Okay, we'll go here. All right, so what we'll do, just render one out. And as you see here, what we're getting is pretty simple. So I, I think what I want to do is I want to take, I want to use both of these. I want to use the black and the gray. Let me go ahead and make another one of these because I'm going to make this in a minute. Um, and we're going to put them both on there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the contours off on the first one. And we're going to turn them on on the second one. Of course, we're going to go back to angle, Y, or was it, was it Y? And then I think this was cranked up pretty high. All right. So now we have the black handling the outside and the gray handling the contours. All right. So pretty much the same thing, but as you see now, the gray is affecting it quite a bit. So um, then we'll go into the black again here. And we'll go back to the color. 
And see, it says the range on this is from the object. Let's do the from the camera and see if we get a different effect. And um, move that really far over there. Most of it being black. See, it looks like we're getting something. So, but it looks like that thickness isn't very good. So we'll bump it up a little bit. Let's see if we get a better shot that way. Yeah. Looks like those lines are coming out pretty good. All right. And so, of course, you can also change the distance on that. On the, um, You can create a custom distance. You can make it a spline. You can really start to see that coming into the middle and you can slightly tell that it's it's changing its thickness all right well the other thing you can do is you can turn on the transparency of an object, replace the texture, and now we're getting lines just by themselves. You see? Pretty good. And so now what we'll do is we'll change the white, the black to white. Or actually we'll go back and make a new white. And so now, should be getting white on there and those lines and yeah see the lines the lines are now showing up but do you notice that it's not showing through the object so there's a way we can do that under here under the properties in here it says hidden call we check this to to uh, children and we uncheck self calling so now when we render Now we're getting it through the object. So now we're going to add, I'm going to go ahead and add a third material to that, only on contours, and we're going to do it in an opposite direction, the Z. We're going to increase them quite a bit and we're going to make this one change this color like red and so now you should be able to see very distinctly some of the techniques you can apply through using cinema's features here That's pretty nice. And to show you a little more on the distance thing, let's go color, distance, um, multiply, and uh, we're going to do this blue, and we're going to do this green. Let's see what we get out. Doesn't look like we're getting much. It's there, but it's not having the same effect as the red was. 
this is all about adjusting, you know, to the object. to the camera again. Yeah, see, now you're seeing we're starting to get subtle changes in those colors as we're adding. Yeah, looks pretty good. Anyways, guys, that was a quick tutorial on uh, SketchingTube. Thanks again.